The cost of coal, peat and briquettes has risen from today with the introduction of new carbon tax. It's news that's likely to be welcomed by those behind plans to erect wind turbines, which generate wind energy right across the Midlands. The plan is not being embraced by everyone and Midweek's Kira Doherty has this report. It's been described as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for Ireland. It promises to be a major source of job creation and a sustainable boost to the national economy. It's called the Energy Bridge, and it's one of a number of projects that intend to build wind turbines across the Midlands. Eddie O'Connor is the founder of Mainstream Renewable Power. His company's developing the so-called Energy Bridge, a project that aims to export electricity from Irish wind farms to the UK. Europe has declared that all fossil fuels have to be finished and done with by 2050. Somebody's going to have to supply that power, the gap, if you like, that's left by, by no, no coal, no oil, no gas. So Ireland has an opportunity uh, that comes along once in a generation, and in one generation of maybe 20, uh, to make a difference in the world. There's a big vision for the future that Ireland can actually, along with England, finish up supplying most of Europe with this green electricity. And we have it on land and we have it offshore. And what the present project about is mainly you know, taking the stuff that's on land and turning stuff that's completely useless and has no value whatsoever and turning it into Ireland's biggest export. Tell me about the job prospects, Eddie. How many jobs do you expect to create? We're certainly going to employ um, 2,000 people more anyway, just man maintaining and operating the turbines. There'll be 10,000 man years uh, on building uh, the turbines uh, and erecting them and, and building the, the cables and, and all the, the substations and, and, and that. Uh, when we get the manufacturing going, uh, we should be able to create 40,000 jobs. So this is the plan. Over the next couple of years, they intend to build approximately 40 wind farms, housing around 2,000 wind turbines right across the Midlands. Now, the energy company say that that figure is actually closer to around 1,000 wind turbines. However, the Midlands is mobilising. Right across Leash, Offaly, Kildare and Westmeath, small local groups are gathering and they strongly oppose this plan. Last Thursday, a meeting was called for concerned citizens in the Tullamore area. Their issues? Well, the visual impact of the turbines, the noise and the possible impact that they believe they will have on their health. 50 miles away in Roscommon, stories like that of Michael and Dorothy Keane perhaps fuel their unease. The Keanes bought this house in 2004 for the retirement. At that point, wind turbines nearby were in the planning stage and the couple say life has been devastated by the noise that they now hear inside their home. Michael, you say you can hear this in every single room in the house, including your bedroom. It was so bad that we've, we, we had to do something drastic with our window. We had to take the curtains down and we had to start off here with two inches of polystyrene okay. up tight against a double glazed window and then a double continental quilt stuffed into the opening. Small window, three feet by five feet. Mm. And then one, two, two. more continental quilts and, and, a, fleece. and a fleece. And we still can't keep it up. Gilettric, the company behind the wind turbines, say they've commissioned independent surveys that confirm that the screened wind farm is operating within noise thresholds previously agreed with Roscommon County Council. Michael and Dorothy, however, disagree with the methods used to measure the sound. What can you hear? As well as the, uh, the tonal uh, hum, there's a, a rhythmic pulsing, pulsing noise, which is like a woof, woof, woof like an aeroplane going around your house but never lands. If you were living beside an airport, the plane would come and land and it would be gone and another one would take off and it would be gone and you'd have space in between where you were getting sleep. But what happened to us was that over the time when we weren't really challenging the indoor noise, it seemed to creep up on us to the point that we realised that we weren't functioning at the same level during each day. What impact is this having on your health? I'm concerned actually about Michael's health and I'm concerned about my health because I know 
Uh, for a start, not getting enough sleep isn't good for you. Sometimes you can deal with it, sometimes you can't. But um, this is tied in with the noise. You feel as if it's coming in any little crack in the house. We think, well, maybe we need to seal the house up more. But I don't think that's going to be it because it's getting in everywhere. I feel these are the remaining years of our life. We're not going to be coming back. Um, I don't feel sorry just for us, for our loss. But um, I can see that other people, and uh, I'm no Holy Joe or anything, but I, I can see that other people are going to be affected by this. But other people probably are already affected by this. The wind turbines are over 750 metres from the couple's home. That's in excess of current guidelines. Yes, it is beyond the, uh, the current guidelines, which are generally 500, but it's still not far enough. <laughs> as bad and all as it is outdoors, to have it indoors at all times, it's just not, it's not acceptable. Over 70 miles away in Vickerstown, County Leash, local resident Ray Conroy is one of the founding members of the Leash Wind Energy Awareness Group. On Monday, I travelled to his home, where a small group of local people were gathered. They say the community is divided over this issue. Local farmers are signing deals, which will see them receive 18,000 euro for every turbine they allow on their land, which other local people, like this group, oppose. We certainly know they're not going to bring any benefits to this community. They've already divided us, and um, it's not nice to have grown up in an area and then to feel that the area has been divided. The plans, according to Ray, will see his house surrounded by wind farms. It's just the scale of this development that's proposed. It's so huge that it's going to affect thousands of people. There is no scientific proof that these things don't affect your health. The companies will argue that they do have scientific proof and that there is research which says that there is no effect on your health. I mean, there's anecdotal evidence, and, and we've actually talked to people who have moved out of their houses on account of these, and we're talking about being not within 500 metres, we're talking about within a mile of these things. The fact that companies can say that there are no health concerns, that doesn't give me any great comfort. I mean, they're in the business of selling something. They're in the business of making money. I mean, I mean, they're, you know, it's a, I'd hate to have to take a chance that what they're telling me is correct. Eddie O'Connor rejects the notion that there is any noise from turbines or that they have any negative health implications. I mean, if you look at the, at the literature, uh, you see it's, it's noise causes you to not sleep, not sleeping causes you to get cancer, high blood pressure, schizophrenia, depression, Uncle Tom Cobbley and all. I mean, I've, these, these are not the original ones. I mean, I saw a wind farm try to be built in Edinburgh, and somebody says, if this wind farm gets built, meteoric niobium is going to get released from the soil. It'll go into the water courses, and a million people will be killed. Meteoric niobium. Another one I've heard is, where are they going to put all the radioactivity uh, from the big power stations in England? Why into the bases of the turbines? You would be amazed what gets said. All of it untrue. Not a shred of evidence has been studied extensively. Just yesterday, the Leash Group and a few others gathered to protest outside the Tullamore Court Hotel. Oh, sure you go. What price has Inside the hotel, Energy Bridge, we're running a roadshow aimed at encouraging those involved in the manufacture of turbines to open production plants in Ireland. If this happens, energy companies believe that thousands of jobs could be created. They're being supported by Enterprise Ireland. The positives are that it is a, a, potentially a very, very large-scale project that can catalyse a whole lot of other new businesses around it. And from an Enterprise Ireland point of view, we would see the opportunities coming in both engineering, particularly in the manufacturing side, and in the service side. And obviously, there's clearly going to be core jobs here around operations and maintenance once all of this is up and running. But meanwhile, there's an opportunity to build other businesses and hopefully to see the attraction in of maybe other multinational companies as well as the development of indigenous businesses. And we would be very keen to see that happen because what it can translate into is businesses that can in turn use this as a platform from which they can build further export-oriented businesses.
Around rural Ireland, a divide is opening up between those who believe that everyone will benefit from this plan and those who feel that they're being victimised by it. The energy companies, however, are confident that they can prove that the concerns of those who oppose these plans are misplaced. The NIMBYs are afraid of the future and afraid of change. And it's up to us, it's up to people like, developers like us, to reassure them, to talk to them. And we have a massive education programme to get, to get on with here now. It's going to be two years before we apply for our uh, planning permission. We have to do all those studies on the environment. And by the time we've that completed, everybody will know what's in store, everybody will be well informed, and uh, I don't anticipate seeing an awful lot of opposition.